Hey guys, Jeremy here for The Armory Life. If you've watched any movies or played any video games in the past 20 years, you've probably heard of the legendary M1A rifle and its many variants from civilian to military use. But you may be asking, does the gun made in 1954 still hold up to today's modern standards? That's what I set out to test. Now, out of all the variants that Springfield Armory offers of the M1A, the SOCOM, from a modification standpoint, has to be my favorite. I appreciate the 16-inch barrel and the M-lock or Picatinny rails it has on the stock for mounting grips, lights, or lasers. Also, with the use of some aftermarket parts, this rifle is a breeze to suppress. The 16-inch barrel allows for a shorter overall length once suppressed, which makes the rifle a little bit easier to maneuver and keeps the weight down. The M1A still holds up in terms of accuracy, reliability, and modularity with the right accessories. You also have the benefit of getting a rifle platform that has been perfected and is extremely reliable and accurate right out of the box from Springfield Armory. As an avid collector and student of firearms, I wanted to see how the M1A SOCOM CQB could hold up to today's standards of a modern semi-automatic 308. Now we think one of the most defining features of a modern rifle these days is modularity. Now sticking with most of the stock configuration of the M1A SOCOM, I wanted to see how it would hold up to having optic, illumination, sound suppression, and general weapon handling. Now iron sights, in my opinion, are a great backup option for a rifle. But if I am able to mount an optic such as a red dot or a powered optic, I will absolutely do that every time. And the M1A SOCOM has a forward section of Picatinny rail on the top just for that purpose. So sticking with the stock optic rail placement on the Archangel CQB stock, I went with an Aimpoint Pro red dot. If you know anything about the Pro, which is patrol rifle optic, you know that it is virtually bulletproof. With a two MOA dot that can run for three years in continuous operation, submersible up to 150 feet, and flip up lens covers, this optic is ready for whatever you throw at it. The Aimpoint Pro comes with a mount that is set up perfectly for AR-15 height. Since we are already dealing with a lower cheek riser, I wanted to get the Pro as low as I could. For that, I called my friends at American Defense Manufacturing. They recommended the Aimpoint Pro 30mm low mount with titanium lever. This set the optic as low as possible on the rail and perfectly in line with my eye while aiming the rifle in a natural position with the Archangel CQB stock. Now moving forward to illumination. I needed a light that had a tighter cone that wouldn't cast a shadow from the suppressor once the light is activated. Being that the Archangel stock stops around 3 inches from the muzzle, it's tough to push the light out far enough to eliminate suppressor shadow with a wider cone of light. I decided to use an Arasaka Defense 600 series Malkoff Devices E2XT with an inline scout M-lock mount. The E2XT features 500 lumens and 55,000 candela of white light to provide a tightly concentrated beam for distance, with a small amount of spill light for close range and peripheral lighting. With a concentrated head, the E2XT can easily illuminate targets out to 100 yards. For the tail cap, I went with a momentary on-off because there isn't a great mounting spot for a pressure pad, and I was able to position the light directly to where my thumb naturally comes to rest. Now that brings us to weapon handling. The Archangel CQB stock does a great job at modernizing the M1A SOCOM. One thing to note, these rifles are not lightweight, especially once you add an optic, suppressor, lights, etc. To aid in the handling, I added a Magpul AFG2 or angled foregrip. The AFG2 slides onto the pick rail at the six o'clock position of the stock, the perfect position where my hand grips a rifle while also being able to actuate my illumination device. Having a foregrip on these rifles is a great way to be able to control recoil and gives you a solid and consistent indexing point for repeatability and stabilization. Now suppressing these rifles can be tricky and requires very specific parts, but once you have the know-how and the parts, it's very easy to do. First, you need a device to convert the M1A threads into standard 5 8 by 24 thread pitch. For this, I chose the Delta P Design SOCOM muzzle thread adapter. The beautiful thing about this specific adapter is that it allows you to retain the stock front sight position. It also uses a two-piece design to register directly onto the barrel threads and thread shoulder for perfect alignment. The install is simple and alignment is perfect every time, a particularly important aspect when suppressing a rifle. Now that we have the standard 5 8 by 24 thread pitch, we are ready for our sound suppression device. Silencer Co. is one of my go-to companies for suppressors. The extensive knowledge of their engineers and their wide range of suppressors make them a fantastic option for suppressing any platform. I chose the Omega 300 for this project. The Omega 300 is one of the lightest, shortest titanium 30 caliber suppressors on the market. I also attached the anchor brake front cap to further tame the recoil of the mighty battle rifle cartridge. 
The Omega 300 is a great option for the M1A, being that it is lightweight, sturdy, and has minimal back pressure. Now speaking of back pressure, the next part we add is instrumental in getting this rifle to run reliably suppressed. The M1A does not come with an adjustable gas system. Therefore, if you add a suppressor, which slows the gases down as they leave the barrel and enter the baffles, you also introduce pressure back into the rifle, thus speeding up the action, which induces undue wear and tear. Enter the Schuster Manufacturing Adjustable Gas Plug. This small gas plug replaces the factory version and allows you to adjust the amount of gas in the system. You then run the rifle with the suppressor attached and adjust the gas plug until your rifle cycles reliably. The gas plug will vent excess gas to keep your rifle running with just the right amount of gases. This greatly reduces the amount of gas back into your face as well since the M1A has an open top design. So, in my opinion, the M1A still holds up as a great semi-automatic 308 option held to today's standards. The major difference is going to be the manual of arms, which you might be used to more of the AR-15, AR-10 platforms. The reliability and accuracy still rivals some of the new weapons platforms being designed and produced today. So take a moment and treat yourself to that brand new beautiful freedom stick. You won't be disappointed.